Welcome to the Winning Family Podcast with Rodney and Michelle Gage. This is a podcast designed to help you build winning relationships in your marriage and with your kids. My name is Dr. Linda Travelute, and I'm your host for the Winning Family Podcast. We want to say thank you for joining us. It would mean the world to us if you'd subscribe to our podcast and rate and review and let us know if you find the content helpful and encouraging. And hey, be sure to share these episodes with your friends. And at the end of today's podcast, I've got something very special for you. We're going to share how you can get a free copy of this right here. If you're watching us on YouTube, you'll see this beautiful new book called The Double Win by Rodney Gage. You can get your free copy going to help you win at work and at home and we want to get a copy to you absolutely free so tune in till the end we'll show you how you can do that so today I'm joined by Rodney and Michelle Gage and guys we're going to talk about something so powerful so incredible you told me you don't even need notes for this because it is just this is what you guys do right it is about what we do uh, it is what you do it's five prayers to unlock God's blessing on your family yeah yeah we're very passionate about this one that's for sure and Yes. Excited. This is very important, very, very important. And I think it can be a game changer for many people's situations and circumstances because nothing is more powerful than prayer. That's for sure. Yep. That is for sure. And uh, it's something that is really personal to me because it's something that my dad had taught us. And it's he initially taught us three Ps, and we added to it two more um, from a scripture in the Bible. And it's something that we pray over our family, our children, our lives, our friends, our church, every situation of our lives. We pray these five prayers. And it's just a, a structure that we have that we can simply go through and call out names and and attach this blessing on their life and, or, or over a situation situation and it's powerful because mm-hmm. we have seen God answer these prayers and it is it's so powerful and we're thrilled to get the chance to share it with you yeah yeah and, well can I just interject because yeah, I'll tell you personally I when I first heard you guys teach on this and and I heard about it from your you know you're telling everyone about how your dad uh did that for you guys and then then how you guys added these since i heard you do that i have been doing it over my family it's just a very beautiful beautiful way to uh systematically pray and cover all the bases that's really what this is you're covering all the bases so let's break it down five prayers to unlock god's blessing on your family and the first is can i say it sure god's provision which is big right (laughs) right yes that's right well, I think, you know, let me, I want to just uh, also just share a couple of things before we kind of just unpack the whole aspect of provision too, because I just know from my world of, you know, talking through so many people's circumstances and situations who often feel overwhelmed. Maybe they just feel in a hopeless situation. Right. You know, they are facing circumstances that are just like, monumental and they are monumental there are some who just very literally are praying for miracles to happen because if they don't receive that miracle they don't experience that breakthrough there's so much at stake you know it could be a marriage or it could be something circumstantial with a child or whatever i mean obviously there's endless circumstances but because of the overwhelming uh, feeling that some people have a lot of times people don't even know what to pray They don't even know where to start. And sometimes we have intentions. We want to pray. But again, sometimes it's breaking it down to how do we pray? And am am I praying the right thing? Is God really even listening? Is God answering my prayer? How do we know if God's answering our prayer? So we all have these questions, right? We all have this desire. We know there's there's an important part of life that requires prayer. Without My my dad used to say it this way, little prayer, little power. Mm. Uh, much prayer, much power. No prayer, no power. <laughs> so we <laughs> so all good. want much power, right? But right. how do you get there? How do you get the power of God to work on behalf of whatever it is? And so we don't have to figure, the good news is we don't have to figure that out. Right. God's already, right. he, he wants, and again, it goes back to a relationship. So we, I think sometimes we feel this overwhelming or intimidating, like I have to recite these 
big prayers and I have to use all these big words and I have to somehow impress God with my articulation of how I voice a prayer. And God's not interested in all that. Right. The Bible want, tells us he's not interested <laughs> in that. Right. He Isn't just that wants amazing? a relationship. Right. Yeah. He just wants us to come to him as a loving, caring, merciful, empathetic, understanding, all-knowing, loving father. He just wants us to come to him. So I just want That's to right. say that out of the gate that, mm, you know, there's no magic formula. There's no, Absolutely you know, not. step one, two, three, and all of these things are just going to happen. But I think there are some things that God gave us to reassure us that he's right. listening, that he wants us to come to him, that he wants us to bring our burdens and our cares to him. And, you know, Jesus right. even said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Yep. And we don't have to carry that burden. We don't have to try to figure things out on our own. We can, we can come alongside God mm -hmm. and that's we right. can release whatever it is that's weighing us down, our fears, our concerns, all of those things, we can bring them to our Father who already knows what right. we need. Right. So... That's good. Saying all that at, right out of the gate, I think it's important for us to yeah. help everybody understand that, you know what? God's with us. He's for us. And he wants what's best for us. Especially so he, also in our families, yeah. you know, that we can, I think the things that you're referring to, a lot of times it can be relationships are a lot of what we carry, you know, that is where the weight is. And the Bible does say to cast off that weight upon him. And, and what's so powerful about these five Ps is they are God's word. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, Aaron's priestly prayer. And I think you can read that, Rodney, but uh, that is... It's a prayer given by God to Aaron to pray over the people. So mm -hmm. we know that there's power in the word of God. So when we pray God's words, when we pray his word, there is power in that. And we know that we're praying the right thing when yes. we pray the word yes. of God, yes. you know. So, um, again, that's why this, this simple system of prayer is so, so powerful. No matter what season of life you're in, no matter what you're walking through, maybe you're going through an incredible time. Well, just remember that you can pray this every single day mm -hmm. no matter what's going on most times in life we have something good and bad going on at the same time yeah. you know yeah. it's usually not always great and always bad we so usually true. have both going on at the same time in our life and that's why it's so important what we do daily not just what we do in a day or every other day or once a week it's what we do daily yeah. is where the power is yeah. in our lives so that's why this is so exciting well in this in this uh couple of verses of scripture here in numbers chapter six and it's often referred to as as aaron's priestly prayer and what that basically right. means is that god gave this prayer specifically to aaron to pray over the people of israel so think about this. So God said, Here's, here is a framework you can use. Here is a system, as Michelle just emphasized, that you can use to pray consistently over the people. And here's what it is. It's in number six, verses 24 through 27. And it says, May the Lord bless you and protect you. And may the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, I myself, did you hear that? I myself will bless them. So that is powerful and it's very comforting and reassuring to us that this is a prayer that we can't get wrong. <laughs> God sure. gave it to us so that we could pray it faithfully and consistently each and every day over our lives, over our marriage, over our yeah. children, our families. And uh, as you pointed out, the very first one is the P of provision. So there's five P's. And that right out of the gate, it says, may the Lord bless you. So in that blessing is God's favor. In that blessing is God's provision. In that blessing is God's abundance. And with that, God wants to bless us. He want, He longs to bless us. He wants to bless your life. He wants to bless your marriage. He wants to bless your children. He wants to bless your home. He wants to bless your career. He wants to bless your health. Everything about you, God wants to bless. And so, but blessing also comes out of obedience. 
And so God can't bless disobedience. He wants to bless obedient hearts. So as we're praying out of an obedient heart, as we're praying this prayer of blessing, what we're doing is we're breaking it down. So we're saying, Lord, bless my children and call your children out by name, specifically in prayer. You know, bless Johnny, you know, bless Sue, <laughs> bless, you know, uh, Mark. Pray specifically by name that God's provision yes. will be with them, that God will provide doors of opportunity, yes. that God will provide the right friendships, that God will provide, you know, financially, yes. that God will provide physically, emotion, whatever need there is, Jehovah Jireh, God is our provider. Mm -hmm. So we, right. he is the giver of all gifts. That's and right. every gift we have, the Bible says, comes from above. So God wants to bless us and he wants to, pro he wants to provide whatever need that we have in our lives. That's right. And uh, Paul wrote from a prison cell in Philippians 4.19, <laughs> but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so he was not like he had everything that you can imagine he needed, you know, from what we would perceive as God providing and blessing. He was in a prison, mm -hmm. you know, but God, he was saying, even in the most difficult of times, my God will provide for all your needs according to his riches. And so yeah. God knows what we need more than we know. God knows what our kids' needs are much more than what we mm -hmm. know, especially if they don't even live with us anymore. Mm -hmm. It's the season that we're all in right now. Mm -hmm. And God knows spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, every need of our lives and our kids' lives. And he is the only one that can provide for every need of their life. So it's so powerful to be able to pray that over them every single day yeah and and we have so many endless testimonials just i mean we, we're living proof that yeah we can testify to the fact that we have seen god move and god has provided mm -hmm. for our family he's provided for our children he's in, in michelle and i's marriage you know he has provided in so many different ways it's not always just financial provision sometimes our right. mind goes to the monetary aspect of it right. and that is certainly a part of one of the ways that god blesses but god provides in so many other ways we have seen god literally provide opportunities unique to our circumstances that honestly could not be humanly explained where we right. had to take a step back and said only god could have done that right. god is the one who opened that door right. god is the one who provide he put the right people at the right place at the right time we've seen that happen with every one of our children we've seen god's provision that honestly we we, we had nothing to do with it it was like only god could have orchestrated that and i really do yeah. believe it's because of the consistency of just praying faithfully, praying daily of God's provision, that God would take care of them, that God would bring the right people into their life, that God would open doors of opportunity, that he would provide for every single need. And I just believe that, you know, when we pray and we believe in faith, that God was gonna answer those prayers, it may not be in our timing, and it not even might not even manifest in it in, in our way but it's going to manifest in god's way and in his timing and so we just have to be mindful of the fact that when we pray faithfully and consistency consistently for god's blessing that he will provide god is the ultimate provider and he will take care of our children he'll take care of our financial needs he'll take care of our of our health as long as we take care of ourselves we have to do our part right um, we can't just go out and eat cheeseburgers and french fries all day and say, Lord, we, isn't it funny how we'll, we even pray? The Lord, please bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies when we're eating sloppy joes and uh, you know, french fries. Let's not even go there so, right now. Anyway. <laughs> well, and also, I think, you know, you can't ignore the fact of what Matthew and Matthew talks about that um, seek first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness and all these other things will be provided for you. Well, that comes in every area of our life. We can't just ask for God's provision when we haven't put him first mm -hmm. in our life, whether that's financial 
financially uh, or investing in re our relationships and putting him first but uh, God has provided in ways that we can't even explain like you said that it was just miraculous and I know Linda you've seen the mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. thing in your life and when God is just faithful to his word mm -hmm. and when we are faithful when he finds us faithful then he can bless us you know because the bible has uh, principles and behind the principles there's power and so when we put those principles into action in our lives whether that's through generosity then god will provide mm. for us you know if we're stingy it's gonna be tough for god to provide for us just mm. to be honest even if we're praying for that <laughs> uh, prayerfully he's going to change our heart when we are praying those these type of prayers in our lives yeah. so shall we move to point two or the second p sure absolutely i think i think again just just to you know just to transition here and once again reinforce that again this is a framework and yeah. that's why this priestly prayer of Aaron's is so powerful is because it does consist of these five things that naturally just evolve from this passage of scripture. So just like God provided manna for the people of Israel when they were there, you know, mm. um, in the wilderness, God will provide for us as well. That's right. So that's great. There's so, another P. There's another P. And I love that you guys have proven that this works. So we, we're yeah. talking about the five prayers to unlock God's blessing on your family. And the first that Rodney and Michelle talked about was God's provision. Now we're going to move on to God's protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's that look like? This one's huge. Mm. This one is huge. Yeah. Just praying a hedge of protection, just praying for God's protection over our children's lives. And again, we've seen this uh, played out, you know, obviously we have to teach and invest the word of God into our children and praying that they will make wise mm -hmm. choices. Um, but just in every way, praying for God's protection over our lives, whether it is financially or physically, uh, spiritually, just praying for that protection around our lives. You just think of it almost as a circle of God's protection uh, over our lives. And we've seen God protect and, you know, you ne you don't know what a day will hold, right? Mm -hmm. And so you never know what's coming. And we need the protection of God on our lives. And we can ask for that. He's told us that we can ask for that. He, he gave that to Aaron as a prayer over the people to protect them. Mm -hmm. And we can pray that same protection over our family. And, you know, we, have, we live in a world that is coming against the family. Yeah. And we can pray a hedge of protection around that, our, our kids' minds. Even yes. the Bible talks about the helmet of salvation yes. to protect our mind. Mm -hmm. And we uh, have the choice of the things that we're going to think about, but we can also pray a hedge of protection around our children, around our own mind, and uh, giving us wisdom as to what we allow into our mind and spirit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. mm -hmm. I love the fact you used the helmet of salvation because in that same passage, passage of Ephesians 6, which is a great passage of scripture, by the way. It's a very powerful and there's a lot of um, word pictures and imagery because it's talking about the full armor of God that right. every day we should put on the full armor of God. So <laughs> we don't automatically wear it. it. We have to put it on, the Bible says. So we have to put on. And one of the pieces of that armor is the shield of faith. And so the shield does what? It defends, it deflects from the fiery arrows that the enemy is gonna be constantly throwing at us, our children, our marriage. So when we have the shield of faith, what is it doing? It's serving as a barrier of protection to shield us from the things that the enemy wants to use to take us out. Mm -hmm. So when we're praying for protection, we're actually in many ways putting up the shield of faith you know, no weapon formed against us, the Bible says, will prosper. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that there is a real spiritual enemy. There is a warfare, if you will, as, as believers in Christ, we wake up every day with a real adversary mm -hmm. who's out to take That's us, right. take That's us right. out. Mm -hmm. And he wants to defeat us. And I believe with all my heart, one of the ways he defeats us is in the home. Yeah. 
And so he knows that if he can, if he can create division and he can create animosity in the home, if he can, if he can stir something up in a marriage, if he can stir something up with sibling rivalry, if he can stir something up that creates division, then he knows he's got his foot in the door. So we have to pray for protection in every way, spiritually, emotionally, as you were just talking about while ago, just with our mind, mentally, you know, praying for protection in every relationally in yes. relationships. That's as you huge. know, as parents, and our kids are exposed to so many, especially in the digital world in which we live. I think that's probably one of the mm-hmm. greatest weights of concern that most parents face is what their children are being exposed yeah. to through, right. you know, every and, and honestly, from pornography to um, so many different things that that kids now have literally at their fingertips at their disposal at their disposal and so they're exposed mm-hmm. to so much and we need to pray for god's protection that he'll guard their hearts and their minds through christ jesus that's good and so praying protection is huge so that's what we want to do we want to pray a hedge of protection hold up the shield of faith and every day mm-hmm. asking that god will strengthen us strengthen our home our marriage that he will fortify, build a wall, a hedge of protection that will insulate us from the things on the outside the enemy wants to use to defeat us on the inside. And we've seen this prayer answered in our lives, Linda. I think it, one thing in particular that comes to mind today is uh, a relationship that one of our kids had. And it we prayed and prayed and we had to step in mm. and say this relationship is not going to be allowed in our home while you're under our roof <laughs> but praying that heads of protection around them that our child was not happy about us ending that relationship but we stood firmly together that that was not going to come into our family dynamic Mm -hmm. because it did not align with our core values which is a whole other thing that we can talk about but we can pray about that absolutely and god turned that situation around in a huge huge way and he protected our child not that we were not loving towards this other person this um and our, we want the very best for them but for we knew for our child's future that was not aligning with the vision that we had the values that we had as a family so we had to pray a hedge of protection around that but mm-hmm. we had to be super aware we were very aware of text messages we were very aware of what was going on their phone and that's that's a part of being the king of you know the where you're talking about that the city that has the wall of protection around it we got to be very aware as well as we pray for protection we got to be at the watchman's tower right (laughs) looking and being aware of what we need to um, for our kids to be protected from but ultimately God knows and we can trust him with that I love that and you know sometimes I think parents forget how much power is in their prayers because I too have prayed people in and out of my child's life my children's lives it really does work I'm not saying it's a magic trick but yeah (laughs) Yeah, when you when you walk in the word and you you pray the word over them it is powerful yes and and we've got to take advantage of that yes that's so good so that's the prayer of protection now let's talk about the prayer of God's presence Mm -hmm. over your children your family well this is an important one because I think it's a I think it's a principle that we need to teach our children at a very early age that God's presence is with them. You know, as we become followers of Jesus, as we put our faith and trust in Jesus, God's presence is in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. So he gives us the Holy Spirit who lives, resides, and dwells within us. So therefore we become the temples, you know, of God in that regard. So when you think about God's presence, God's presence, he is, he is a, he is an omnipresent God. He is everywhere. He's all knowing. And so God's presence, just like in the old Testament, when the people of Israel, you know, when they left Egypt and they were in the, in the wilderness and what did God do? He provided. So he not only provided manna for them to eat, he gave them all the things that they needed. But he also wanted to reinforce his presence. Remember, they built the, the, uh, the ark 
and they carried the ark. And the Bible says that there was a pillar of fire at night that helped guide them. And then there was a there was a cloud during the day. Yes. And what would what that whole that symbolic of the fact mm-hmm. that God's presence was with them. And his yes. presence was there to protect them. His presence was there to help guide them. And his presence was there to help, you know, provide for everything in their lives. And so we have to remind our children as they go off to school. Because, you know, you know, there's so many things that kids today battle a lot with loneliness. Mm. They, they struggle a lot with rejection. There's so much pressure among, you know, friendships and all the stuff that, you know, they're trying to find their sense of identity and acceptance with. And so what happens when a kid, you know, suddenly runs up against a circumstance where they feel alone, where they feel rejected, or maybe as a husband or wife, you feel those situations in your life where you just feel like we're so alone in this situation. And you feel like sometimes I'm the only one that's going through this. You need to be reminded God has not forsaken you. God is with you. He is for you. And we have to just constantly remind ourselves of God's presence. Yes. He's there. Yes. And, and, and I just want to say this one last thing before, before we transition. And that is, at the end of the day, we are as close to God as we choose to be. So God doesn't move. We're the ones who move. We drift. But God's presence is always there. That's right. So we just have to acknowledge His presence. As we pray for His presence, uh, that's something that I pray every day that His presence would guide them. As you said, the the fire by night and the cloud by day. That our for our children, I just pray God that Your presence would guide them along the right path as they trust in You with all their mm-hmm. heart and lean not into their own understanding. That You would make the way clear before them that your presence would guide them i just feel like it's just so important that we pray that's Mm -hmm. good so let's talk about the the prayer for god's power yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and i think this is really goes more along the lines of just you know god's power to do supernaturally what we can't do in the natural you know we're limited but we serve a limitless god we, we, we serve a God who is able. We serve a God who is capable. We serve a God who can do what we can't. Yeah. So God wants to put his super on our natural. And when we're walking by faith rather than by sight, and we're secure and confident in who we are in the eyes of God, and that's not in an arrogant way or in a way that, you know, should build self-righteous self-righteousness with any any believer especially but what we're establishing is is a greater dependency upon god to do something supernaturally that we can't do in our on our own and we have tried to impart that on our children we have tried to encourage them you know what god's power can do something in you and through you that will set you apart yeah. god's power will allow you to do something that you don't think you're capable of doing if you allow him he'll use you in these specific ways and That's we've right. seen we've seen that time and time again manifested even on our own children and through the other friends that we got to see them influence and impact along the way and again right. sometimes we sit back and we say only god could have done that right, that was right. god's that was just god's hand and power being demonstrated in such an amazing way that only God could have orchestrated that. And so, again, there's power in prayer, and God wants to empower us as couples. He wants to empower us as a family. He wants to empower our children to be saltier salt and brighter light out there in the world and so yeah when you talk about the power the favor of god and the scripture says smile upon us Mm -hmm. you know that you you think about that this god smiling down on you it's like a parent smiling and saying hey i want to just bless you i want the power of god you know to be on your life Mm -hmm. and i when you when i think of the power of god i'm praying for the favor of god we talk about the fog you know walking in the fog the favor of god when there's nothing like the favor of god Mm -hmm. there there you can't explain that and that's the power of god on our 
our lives. And the Bible also says when we're weak, that is when he's strong. Because we, it, all of life isn't, you know, uh, daisies and roses. Right. It's right. tough. That's and right. we need the power of God on our life. And we, our children need the power of God on their life. But they need to know that when and we need to teach them and we need to understand that when we're going through the most difficult things in our lives, that's when he can make himself strong through us. When we're at the end. We're at our weakest. Mm -hmm. We need the power of God on our lives. And if we're praying that daily over our lives, no matter what we're going through, we're asking for God's power and favor and blessing and him to smile upon us. It's, it is powerful. Mm -hmm. And God does answer that prayer. That's so good. So let's talk about God's peace because that mm -hmm. right there kind of wraps it all up. That's right. right. The prayer of peace. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. I, I think praying peace um, over our lives. I, I pray that that his peace would rule and reign in my heart, in my life, and in my kids' lives. Mm -hmm. And also that I would wear the sandals of peace and that I wear everywhere I will walk, that I would bring the gospel yeah. of peace. Because the Bible tells us that, mm -hmm. that we, we wear the sandals of peace, sharing the gospel of peace. So that those are the two kind of things that I focus on when I'm praying for that peace over our family and over our children, that just the peace of God will rule and reign in, in our heart. When that's you know, that's the ruling center of our life is our heart. So that his peace would rule in our heart. Because when we have peace in our lives, we can face most anything. Yes. And when absolutely. we have peace, that's at the center of our lives. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Just to wrap this up, uh, Philippians 4 uh, verses um, 6 and 7 is one of my all time verses of scripture that I share and it's one that's meant a lot to us, but it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and petition to let our requests be made known unto God. And then it says, and the peace of God will transcend all human understanding, which that's will guard good. our hearts and our minds through Christ mm -hmm, Jesus. You know, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of stress, a lot of fear. Mm. There's a lot of panic attacks that people suffer with. And God is a God of peace. Yes. And so with that, we need to be reminded of the fact that in the midst of whatever we're feeling, that if we, if we feel a sense of panic, if we feel the anxiety or the stress of whatever it is we're carrying, who better to go to right. than our Prince of Peace, our, right. our Heavenly right. Father, right. who wants to replace all of those fears with faith and the peace with panic to where or the panic with, with peace so that he can fill our hearts yes. in that way. And so mm -hmm. we just want to encourage anybody who's maybe going through some seasons of difficulty, stress, fear, anxiety, worry, whatever those are, don't allow the mm -hmm. enemy to use that to choke the life out of you and the hope out of you and the confidence out of you. And so these five P's can serve as a pray, uh, framework for you to pray consistently over. And also, by the way, just we'll finish with this, and that is this is all in a 21-day challenge that we put together. It's on the YouVersion Bible app so people can access that. Right. And we actually break it all down. So there's a 40, uh, excuse me, a 21-day like prayer, prayer guide, prayer so, challenge, a yeah. little journal that you can, devotional, you can mm -hmm. read each day for 21 days and pray specifically over these five Ps. That's yes, great. you can just search Rodney or Michelle Gage <laughs> on, that might be the easiest way to find it um, on the YouVersion Bible app. That's good. So that'll give them a model or even somewhat of a, a script as to how to pray that, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. We That's break beautiful. down the, the five Ps and pray them over 21 days. That's beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Well, guys, this has been good stuff. These, uh, We've talked about the five prayers to unlock God's blessing on your family. And just to recap, we've talked about God's provision, God's protection, God's presence, God's power, and God's peace. I know you've found that so helpful. So as we wrap up our time together today, thank you for joining us. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We'd love to hear from you and receive any questions that you have because Rodney and Michelle want to answer those questions in future episodes. And we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe and rate and review. And as promised, look, if you're watching us by YouTube, via YouTube, you can check out this new book that Rodney came out with at, and you can get a free copy in your hands by going to the double win 
Did I have that right? The Double Win Club. I sometimes mess that up, don't I? Doublewinclub.com. There we go. The Doublewinclub.com. You can learn about their mentoring program. You can sign up for that and get a free copy of that book. So until next time, this has been good stuff, guys. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you sharing. Um, Until next time, we are here to help you win at home and win at life.